Hello and welcome, I'm Aaron M. Sound, and this is Look Up, the show where I interject myself into a conversation I wasn't asked to join. And today, I get to give you some mental sherbet, where I uh, take myself out of the sludge and drudge of the battles down in Genderville, and uh, I come up for a little explanation of perspective that some people may not be aware of. And if you're not in the world of science or you don't study quantum physics or you're not interested in that kind of nerdery, geek like myself, then you would just take everything at face value. Maybe. Possibly. I'm not saying that you do. I am just basically saying, basically, that there is more to the picture than you may think because perspective about dimension and nuance is not just everything in interaction and interpersonal relationships and in how we view things, but it's also in how we build the environment around us. Now, I'm not going to go into the double slit experiment. <laughs> he said slit. <laughs> the double slit experiment today, or explain how protons are matter and how that works in comparison to neutrons and how there's a W boson and several other bosons, including the Higgs boson. I'm not gonna explain how an atom works because I expected, I expect that most of you watching paid some kind of attention in one of the many science classes that you hopefully took. Otherwise, please, there is so much information available out there that can just enrich your brain with food and just shove it on in there. Just shove it in your brain because it makes your brain swell in a good way. Not the Bruce Lee, I took out my sweat glands and now I can't sweat and I'm going to end up passing away from making that choice. And now we've lost Bruce Lee, kind of swelling. Look it up. It sucks. It's the worst thing I, I have ever come to learn. Thanks, History Channel. <sighs> Man, this is what I'm talking about. Ego can make you make some really wildly stupid decisions. Because we all love to quote, be like water. Be like water. Yeah, I would love to be like water, but he didn't want to be like water. He had his glands taken out. Anyways, how did I end up talking about this? I have no clue. Maybe it's because I'm watching too much information. I need to go back to reading too much information. I, I don't, honestly. I don't. It was, it, I just was buried in books. At some point, I'll bring my bookshelves in. I, I, the studio is so barren right now, and, and I'm not endorsing anything you see behind me. It's, uh, it's just, you know, when you travel and tour, you, and you can't see, like, all my tour passes. They're somewhere. There's a, there they are. There's a tree of passes that I, it's, it's literally a tree. At some point, I'll put it up in view so it could be seen. But right now, it's attached to lighting that gives me this lovely, youthful glow. Mm, hello. Mm, yeah. Hi there. Garowl. Anyhow. Let's talk about reality, folks. Let's talk about perspective. And if you've never seen this before, I'm about to share, I'm excited to share it with you because like I said, it's mental sherbet comparative to the things that you and I have been sharing. I'm out of, it's so far outside of the pearly verse, outside of their perspective. I think that this would be heresy because it makes you think about things outside of a limited skew. Skew, a limited viewpoint. It literally makes you think about the other dimensions around you. And I would pose that this is a good thing. This is a healthy thing. Because it's too often in humanity that we don't appreciate how much more is going on. And I won't bore you or make your eyes glaze over with the details of the weirdness right now because they'll become apparent to you as we move along. I will add more, but this is the beginner's class in weirdness of reality. I give you 
my reaction to dunkter <laughs> to dunkter to ter dunkter. This is why I don't edit. Because it's better. It's better this way. And you know it. You know it! By the way, uh, I am excited. I, I plan on bringing uh, a, a youthful favorite of mine on. I found, I found it. It's called Shadow Vision, if you want to prep. Uh, the great Shadow Stevens. Uh, he, it's, it's, it's on his channel. It's all one word, and it's a uh, shadow with an E. Anyhow. You're an asshole, and you know it! Just a lot of how we see imagery and, and just video as we know it comes out of this 1980s thing that somebody showed me on a VHS when I was 14, and it warps... It will warp your mind because it's so weird. <laughs> the more you see it, the more you laugh at it because that's it takes that long. You have to watch it a bunch to even get the humor. It's so advanced. It's alien humor for real. But then again, uh, Shadow Stevens, interesting character. And if you, if I think he's got a show on right now. If you're not familiar with him, go. Uh, his his stuff. I have I personally haven't listened to the most recent stuff, but I have listened to his material before, and he's a great storyteller, and he's also a great uh, pontificator on the same things I talk about, uh, except he, go, he takes it to the other dimensions and uh, really thinks about the nature of the universe in a philosophical way. He also has an amazing, very strange voice. And you might see a little bit... You might see me... Just a little. Emulating. Emulating him just a little bit. That's because I grew up around radio people, though. For real. Yep. Radio. That's that. That's the one that it... Uh, that I was going to say in your car, but it's... When nothing else works in your car, it's that one that says AM and FM. I know you don't listen to it, but... Uh, 101 point... Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I give you, ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, crossed mosquitoes and bull-legged ants, I give you Dr. Quantum, flat world. Oh, what? I'm supposed to press the button? Okay. There's no one there, by the way. That's just me telling me, press the button. Yeah. Dr. Quantum visits Flatland. Yay! From the DVD down the rabbit hole, which I would suggest go getting if you're not familiar with this stuff and if you're into quantum physics and you like smarty, smarty pants stuff. Smarty pants. Woo! <laughs> yeah! All right. Well, 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 hey. Why is everything so trippy all of a sudden? Hey, Welcome he can fly. To fly. And he's a nerd. Oh. A world oh. of only two dimensions. Okay. Only forwards and backwards, left and right. Oh. In this world, binary there thought. is no up and no down. Because binary. Because there is black and white and nothing else. He said, well, she's out in line. Oh, you get what he's saying there? I'm going to shrink myself. In this world... The two-dimensional beings that live here have the concept of three-dimensional objects. These two-dimensional flatlanders have no understanding of cubes, spheres, tetrahedrons, or yours truly. Little tiny a you! In 2D perspective, my 3D finger looks something like this. Ooh, it's a big-ass finger now! It looks like a huge blockage to the little circle squares and triangles. Ah, it's a blockage! Da -da -da -da, super nerd! Hello, little circle. Hey, circle. Okay, now I want to stop for a second because what? Oh, goodness gracious me. Holy mercy. 
Oh, that's uh, that would frighten anything. You you look up into space and that's looking at you. A nerd in a super suit? I'm concerned. All right. Anyhow. Uh yeah, I was just I'm thrown off by the yes. What the bleep? Amazing DVD of information and great. This isn't just like Oh, it's pontificating. It's thinking about no. These this is science. This is these are facts, and and still uh, currently up to date and accepted uh, information that we can trust. Pretty cool, yeah. Anyhow, so what he's about to talk about is everything to do with perception and perspective, and it's coming from the very scientific viewpoint of actual perspective and dimension. But it does apply to our own thoughts and the way we see the world around us. And that's why I'm stopping it right here. Because before I move on, I have to say that this is the best way to explain how you can see outside of your own box if you understand that there is an outside of your own box. I said box, that's right. And he's about to put his finger in it. The box. <laughs> Dr. Quantum's going to put his finger. Anyways. All right. And here we go. Fear of the unknown. Or oh, should yeah, I say, it. not yet known. Not yet it's known is right. If we see only what we know, how does anyone ever see anything new? The unknown. How do we ever get out of our box? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! How often have I been saying this? How often have I been saying this? Now we're saying it in the direction of science that says we live in a dimension where there's more than this and that there's actually more in the universe than just what we perceive and he's about to show you that if you didn't know any better, you would think that it's only what you look at and only what you're surrounded by, but there's more to it. He's about to blow this Pac-Man's little tiny mind. He's about to melt this Pac-Man and make it a, 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 a messiah of Pac-Mans because that Pac-Man then becomes un universally knowledgeable, attains true enlightenment. No, it's for real. This is real. This is science. This is fact. And you too can pull the wool over your own eyes and miss the whole thing. And miss the enjoyment and acceptance and view that you get when you stand outside. When you smash the box that holds you in your little tiny frame. Because your prison's so pretty. Because you built your prison so you want it to be pretty. Well, guess what? There's no roof to your box. And you're about to find out that that's true in a universal, omniversal, multiversal sense. And here's why. Circle? <laughs> don't be afraid. Oh, don't be afraid, oh, little pat girl. Where are you? This is always the tricky you. part to explain. I'm in another dimension, another space. I am above you. <laughs> Stranger danger! Uh, no. Never, never use that word. What word? Never use the A word. Above. Anal? No, he says above. Above. She's afraid of what's above her. Sound familiar? Look familiar? Don't ever use the A word. What's above you? Huh. Huh. She doesn't want to look up. Well, that's weird. It's because she's afraid of the unknown. And I would say, and I would argue, that that is why all of these other shows are preaching what they're preaching is because they're actually afraid of what they don't know and what they're not willing to explore for. In dating, in life, and in everything. 
in enjoyment of, of the experience and the sentient experience in, in 3 and 4 and 10D. But I'm sorry. Let me let Dr. Nerdy here scare the little pack girl a little bit further. As in, you know, Pac-Man girl. He's, he's just totally destroying her entire concept of life. She's probably going to commit suicide after this because she attains the light of men and just runs off into a volcano or something. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. It has a happy ending. Enlightenment is good for you. Smartness is good for you. It is good food for the brain. Okay, okay. I say that patronizingly because sometimes people need it fed to them with a little spoon. Alright. It's forbidden. Well, it's forbidden. What do you think it means? I don't know. And I don't want to know. She doesn't want to know. Punished if you use that word. <gasps> Are you a ghost? <laughs> no, honey. I not. I'm a I god. just have a different I'm perspective him. than you do. I can see things in a way you can't yet. Oh, yeah? Like yes, what? because, okay, and this is an amazing thing he says. I have a different perspective than you do, and I can just see things in a way you can't yet. Not that you can't see it, but that you can't see it yet. You have to be able to be allowed or allow yourself to see above you, below you, and beyond the limited dimensions of what you might think or you're held to. And I'd apply that to just about anything because that's the con in basic everyday life and in the ideas that are being thrown around so randomly on this use of the tubes that somehow life and experience is this limited thing that has a rule book and that if you don't follow this rule book from 1955 to 1962 failure, failure, failure you don't fit in, you won't succeed when I would argue all day long and stand on that hill, that it is a multiplexed, a very complex, a nuanced interaction with a complex universe, omniverse, multiverse, that we haven't even begun to broach the conversation or experience of as the species of human and our potentials haven't even begun that someday a million years from now we will look at the line of humanity and we'll be something else then and we'll look back at us now and talk about us as if we were Cro-Magnon Homo sapiens currently are still evolving and we will as long as we survive. We might even integrate into technology. It looks like we're heading that way. So the portion of us that allows us to adapt is that thing that perpetrates our success. So I would even argue that Adaptability is the most su successful trait. Knowledge being the most valuable asset. Because that's the only way you ever adapt. By gaining knowledge and growing like a good little sponge. And you go, that's your brain. I'm sorry. Let's get back to the scared, the really freaked out Pac-Man girl. Okay. Well, okay, you have a safe hidden in your pantry. <laughs> oh, he's Inside playing God it, now. You have 12 coins, a will, and a passport. That's because he can see 
what she cannot because he's looking at things from a different perspective. He's looking down into a world she can't perceive of him above. She wouldn't have perceived him until he came over and made her aware that he existed above. And this is real in everyday life. Because this is going on in her life. There's so many things. Just like you walk down the street, you may live somewhere. Let's say you live in New York or Los Angeles or, or in a large city like Seattle. Or, or you've lived there your whole life and you've walked down the street your whole life. And, you know, maybe there's a little store or a restaurant that you just never noticed in the nook. And you've lived there your whole life. It's been there your whole life. You come to find out. How did you miss it? Well, you just didn't have the perspective to look over that day or perspective to look before that day. My apologies. So, take into consideration that each one of us, until somebody, some big super nerd, the size of the Empire State Building, floats over us and goes, Hey, you, you there. It helps us find that other perspective, that's not likely to happen. So we have to do it for ourselves, which is why I always suggest people study philosophy or at least read about it. Look into it. Think about it. Have the discussions about the things that make you uncomfortable because we don't grow. We don't actually stretch our limitations without thinking of the things that make us uncomfortable and thinking them through fully because you might be surprised how many strange conclusions you will come to when you really think them through. And that's amazing because life is strange. The universe is strange. Dr. Quantum, kind of weird. Why are you looking at her safe, Dr. Quantum? That's a little creepy. How did you know that? What are you? Are you a god? <laughs> well, no more than you. Nope. You see, yeah. since see? I am above you, <laughs> in the third dimension, I can see inside things in your world. Okay. Third dimension? Ooh, you are what's crazy that? Ghost. There's only two. Look. <laughs> so, if I were to touch the inside of your stomach, Oh, yeah, yeah, I touch the inside of that two-dimensional stomach. You have to cut yeah. through my skin. Creepy. Otherwise, it's impossible. Oh. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, doctor. Stop. Yeah, doctor. Touch that. Oh, ready for no. more? More what? Dimensions. More what? Oh. Yeah. Are you ready? Uh, are no. you ready for more dimensions? Yes, but, oh. Are you? There aren't any. Yes, there are. More? There's more. More? more. What will happen to me? What will I become? Just, you just have to relax. become it to know. Exactly. You have to become it okay. to know, but you have to allow yourself to become it. Like she says, okay, consent. Let me just rub my hands and pull you up out of your reality and put you up on top and make you three-dimensional later. Now you're a marble in the sky. Oh. Wow, yeah, right? I never knew. See? See? But you could. You just have to allow yourself to become the moon in the sky like a marble. which we are most afraid of oh. is what thrills us the most. Truth. 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 That is a great explanation of other perspectives and how you two can pull the wool over your own eyes. If you don't, look up at what's, dare I say, above you. Ah! I'm so glad that I found that because it is exactly the metaphor and reality and science that supports what I've been saying about these limited concepts and the dating arguments, 
in the arguments over general reality and how we all have to live. The, this is, it's so good. It's so good. Dr. Quantum. There's more. There's so much more Dr. Quantum. Next. Uh, yeah, I, I had to give my brain a rest from that, uh, uh, all the, that dating universe and the whatevers and all that stuff. It's just, it was, it was rotting my head like bad candy. So, um, hopefully this is some mental sherbet for you. And once again, I love that the, the scary word was above. Ah! It was amazing. Anyhow, thank you for joining me on this quick version of the show where I interject myself into conversations. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like. And most importantly, the word of the day being above. Ah! Don't forget. Don't forget, folks. Look up. For real.